everybody. Barton here. Gray there. <laughs> um, I want to tell you a quick story, and then I want to talk about Dr. King. Um, I think the story will connect. Um, so, when I first started teaching, I taught the fourth grade. I taught fourth grade for seven years. My first year at this school, I taught the fourth grade. And I played the guitar every day in my classroom. And this thing would happen every year that I played the guitar, where in the beginning, all of my students would be fully engaged and be so excited. He's playing the guitar, this is so cool. And they would be all about it. And then as the days would go on, I would pick up the guitar and they wouldn't care. Or they would, you know, it became a thing where it wasn't a big deal. And I understand that. That's just kind of how life works. And uh, the connection that I want to make is I think that sometimes that happens with Dr. Martin Luther King. Um, I mean, this is a man who did incredible things, like shook the world and changed our country, but then also the world uh, with his thoughts and the things that he helped to create and initiate. So um, I want to think about that a little bit today. Uh, and I also want to introduce you to something about Dr. Martin Luther King that maybe uh, sometimes is forgotten. It's not always considered. So um, this is something I feel like ties in. So most people are aware of the dream. So I have a dream. It's a beautiful dream. The speech, if you've never, uh, I would encourage you to go and look at the words from the speech because it's pretty amazing. Like his writing um, was just beautiful. Um, so most people are familiar with that. In 1964, through the work that he did, he passed the Civil Rights Act. Most people know this, which again, it was an amazing thing. And it really was driven mostly by him and his ideas and his organization and all of that. Um, but he, he lived for some years after that, before he was assassinated. Um, and he created this other thing. And this became another project that was really important for him. Um, he called it the Poor People's Campaign. This is uh, related, I think, to the present day. And what I'm gonna ask you to think about just for a moment is this idea uh, and I think it's the real idea. Somebody, quite possibly, in the room where you're sitting currently, doesn't have enough to eat tonight when they go home. And that's, uh, you know, most people don't like to talk about that. That's kind of a personal thing. That's a, maybe an embarrassing thing for some people, but that's a reality. And we live in a country that's like, you know, it's a pretty special place. But to think that some people may not have enough money to be able to feed their family, this is a this is a problem. And this was a problem then. And Dr. King was on it. He wanted equality, not just for people for the color of their skin, but equality across the board. And so he created this campaign. It's called the Poor People's Campaign. And the intention was to try to make it so that everybody had the equality that comes along when you can afford to buy food for your family, when you can afford to live in a home, when you can afford to work a job where you work hard and make a living where you can, you know, exist in a healthy way. So I want you to think today just a little bit about this, this question, because this question was driving Martin Luther King's thoughts with regards to the Poor People's Campaign. And they were working to try to pass legislation to help people. So uh, economic justice, what is economic justice? Just something to think about. Um, and I will, I'll say it one more time. If you haven't ever read the I Have a Dream speech, it's long, but the words, they are amazing. So, um, you know, yesterday we were celebrating Dr. King with a day off. And I hope that you enjoyed that time. Today, think a little bit about what he was trying to do. We can still do this. We could still find economic justice, but we gotta think about how to. Good to see you. Thanks for watching. Barton Gray out. <laughs>